Sometimes an actor will have their lucky break and become the face of a movie franchise, which is even harder to do in the horror industry with sequels, prequels and spin-offs clogging the genre. Even then, once an actor and their character have been firmly lodged into the hearts of horror fans, it might take years to make another appearance. I'm Tilly from What Culture Horror and these are 10 ridiculously long appearances between horror movie characters. Number 10. Angus Scrim as the Tall Man, Phantasm, 18 years. Even if you've never seen a single one of the five Phantasm movies, there's a decent chance you'll recognise the series' statuesque antagonist, the tall man played by Angus Scrim. As the series' resident eyebrow-raising supernatural undertaker, Scrim is Phantasm and has played the character in every single movie. However, the fifth and final entry into the franchise was stuck in development hell for almost two decades, largely due to the commercial stagnation of the IP up to that point. 1998's Phantasm 4, Oblivion, ended up being made for just $650,000, a mere fraction of the previous film's two and a half million, and it was received with indifference by most fans and the few critics who even bothered to review it. But the series finale, Phantasm Ravager, did finally materialise in 2016, giving Scrim one last chance to play the tall man, as he ultimately passed away a few months before the film was released. While Ravager received polarising reviews from fans and critics, most agreed that Scrim, at 89 years of age, still possessed the imposing screen presence which made him a genre icon in the first place. Number 9. Bruce Campbell as Ash Williams. Evil Dead, 21 years. It is truly baffling that a character as beloved as the Evil Dead's Ash Williams, played by Bruce Campbell, was kept on the cinematic bench for more than 20 years. Campbell reprised the role in 1992's threequel, Army of Darkness, and though he did voice Ash in a number of video games in the years that followed, he didn't play Ash again on the big screen until 2013's Evil Dead Gorefest reboot, appearing in character in a post-credits easter egg where he says his trademark quip, groovy. And this understandably wasn't enough for fans, and thankfully their prayers were answered when, two years later, Campbell starred in the hit spin-off TV series Ash vs Evil Dead for three well-received seasons. With the show's cancellation, however, Campbell announced that he was retiring as Ash, though many are still hoping he might show up for a secret cameo in the upcoming new movie, Evil Dead Rise. Fingers and toes crossed. Number 8. Alex Vincent as Andy Barkley. Child's Play. 23 years. Chucky may be the real protagonist of the Child's Play franchise, but the primary human character is Andy Barkley, the kid relentlessly terrorised by the murderous doll throughout the series. In the first two films, he's played with gusto by Alex Vincent before the part was handed off to Justin Whelan to play 16-year-old Andy in Child's Play 3. Andy is scarcely mentioned in the next two films, Bride of Chucky and Seed of Chucky, and it seems the series was duly moving on without both Andy and Vincent. But in 2013's Curse of Chucky, Vincent made a surprise return to the franchise some 23 years after Child's Play 2, playing an adult Andy who ends up facing off against Chucky in his house and shooting him in the head. Due to the crowd-pleasing success of that cameo and the general warm response to the movie, sequel cult of Chucky saw Vincent return to play Andy again in a far more substantial role. Ironically, this film itself ended with a post-credits cameo from Andy's older foster sister Kyle, with actress Christina Lee reprising her role from Child's Play 2 some 27 years earlier. Number 7. Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates, Psycho, 23 years. It's truly fascinating that it took more than 20 years for a sequel to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho to be produced. Perhaps tellingly, Psycho 2 was released in 1983, just three years after the director's death, with two additional sequels following by the end of the decade. Psycho is quote-unquote fondly remembered for many things, including Anthony Perkins' exceptional performance as Bates Motel owner Norman Bates, who of course turns out to be the movie's killer. It's easy to appreciate Psycho as a one-and-done kind of movie, especially given the lack of sequels in Hitchcock's filmography. Although Psycho 2 came out after the original novel's author Robert Bloch released a sequel novel in 1982. Universal hated the Psycho 2 book and so decided to venture in a different direction, hiring legendary horror filmmaker Tom Holland, the other Tom Holland, to pen the script while Hitchcock's own student Richard Franklin was hired to direct. Most importantly, the film brought back Anthony Perkins to play Norman Bates some 23 years later, the film taking place 22 years later after Psycho as Norman is released from a mental institution and returns to the Bates Motel. 
as a cherry on top, Vera Miles also reprises her role of Lila Crane, now Lila Loomis. Psycho 2, of course, wasn't nearly as well received as the original, but remains a worthwhile curio for fans, in large part to Perkins' nuanced performance. In fact, he continued to be the favoured mainstay during the two similarly divisive sequels that followed before the actor's death in 1992. Number 6, Feruza Bulk as Nancy Downs. The Craft, 24 years. The Craft is a cult classic for damn good reason. A spirited product of 90s girl power fondly remembered for its campy charms, dishy drama, and superb acting quartet of Robin Tunney, Feruza Bulk, Neve Campbell, and Rachel True. Bulk appears in the movie as Nancy Downs, a troubled teen who uses witchcraft in an attempt to escape her grim home life, though her thirst for power ultimately causes her to become the primary antagonist. At the end of the film, Nancy is stripped of her powers and incarcerated at a psychiatric hospital, though the character made a surprise appearance in last year's soft reboot, The Craft Legacy. In the film's final scene, protagonist Lily goes to meet her birth mother and ends up at the psychiatric hospital, coming face to face with Nancy, her mother. It's really the only memorable part of an otherwise forgettable follow-up, and while it lays some fertile ground for future entries, Legacy's commercial failure has unfortunately likely sealed the fate of the series. Number 5. Felissa Rose as Angela Baker, Sleepaway Camp. 25 years. Love it or hate it, Sleepaway Camp is one of the most unforgettable slasher films of the 1980s, positioning itself as a seemingly generic Friday the 13th knockoff, only to deliver a jaw-dropping gut punch of an ending, where it's revealed that the killer was sweet, unassuming Angela, played by Felissa Rose, all along. More to the point, it turns out that Angela isn't really Angela. The real Angela died in an accident years prior, and her deranged Aunt Martha raised her brother Peter as a girl in Angela's place. And so, during the big reveal, we catch a glimpse of Angela, holding a knife in the nude, revealing their male junk in the trunk as the film abruptly ends. Four sequels have since been made, the last releasing in 2012, though only the fourth film, 2008's Return to Sleepaway Camp, managed to coax Rose back to play Angela once again. After Pamela Springsteen took over the role of Angela in the second and third films, it was certainly pretty neat to see Rose back in her signature role 25 years later. In an amusing homage to the original twist, Angela disguises herself under prosthetic makeup to impersonate a local sheriff before removing the makeup at the film's end and cackling maniacally. It's not a good movie, by any means, but at least it delivers a welcome dollop of fan service for those few who've stuck with the series for so long. Number 4. Tom Savini as Blades, The Living Dead, 27 years. Tom Savini is, of course, the most famous makeup wizard in the history of the horror genre, best known for his contributions to the films of George A. Romero. But Savini also had small acting parts in literally dozens of films over the decades, including a role in Romero's 1978 masterpiece Dawn of the Dead as a tough biker guy named Blades, who ends up shot and killed by Peter. Savini ended up reprising this role 27 years later in Romero's 2005 zombie film Land of the Dead, where a zombified version of Blades is shown roaming about as a member of Big Daddy's undead horror even wielding the same machete he did in Dawn. Curiously though, Savini only worked on the film in an acting capacity, as he didn't also contribute his special effects wizardry to the project. Number 3. John Duggan as Grandpa, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, 39 years. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released in 1974 and immediately became one of the most infamous and unforgettable horror movies of all time. A scuzzy, terrifying experience that made anyone who watched it want to shower immediately afterwards. Though everyone was of course talking about primary antagonist Leatherface, the entire Sawyer family are a skin-crawling lot, especially Grandpa Sawyer, the ancient, impossibly crusty patriarch of the family who gets wheeled out in front of Sally near the end of the movie. With the aid of heavy makeup, John Duggan makes Grandpa Grandpa Sawyer a real unsettling presence in the film despite his minimal screen time, and though the character reappeared in the belated 1986 sequel, this time he was played by Ken Everett. Shockingly though, Duggan ended up reprising the role almost a full four decades after first going under the makeup, briefly playing Grandpa in 2013's Texas Chainsaw 3D, which was a direct sequel to the 1974 movie. Amusingly, Duggan was just 20 years old when he played the part originally, though by the time he reprised the role he was looking a little bit more like a grandpa himself. The film also featured appearances from Marilyn Burns, Gunnar Hansen, and Bill Moseley, who are all veterans of the Texas Chainsaw Saga. Number 2. Nick Castle as Michael Myers. Halloween. 40 years. 
Nick Castle will forever be best known for betraying Michael Myers in the original 1978 Halloween, a service for which he reportedly earned just $25 a day while having no idea of the pop culture behemoth he was helping create. Castle, who began a career as a filmmaker himself shortly thereafter, opted not to return for any of the sequels – good choice if you ask me – until the franchise received the sequel reboot treatment in 2018, with the new movie serving as a direct follow-up to the 78 film. Though James Jude Courtney plays Myers for most of the movie, Castle does a appear as the shape in a single shot, where Maya's face is visible in a window, while also providing the breathing sounds for the character. It marked the end of a 40-year gap between appearances for the actor, and he'll reportedly be reprising the role in similar fashion, shared with Courtney for the upcoming sequels Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends. Intriguingly, Castle's impressive record will be imminently broken in Halloween Kills by Kyle Richards, who will return to the role of Lindsay Wallace some 43 years after she played her in the original movie. Number 1. Camille Keaton as Jennifer Hills, I Spit on Your Grave, 41 years. 1978's I Spit on Your Grave is unquestionably the most iconic entry into the rape revenge subgenre, focused on a woman, Jennifer Hills, played by Camille Keaton, who enacts brutal revenge on the four men who gang rape her. If we're getting technical, and we are, Keaton did kind of sort of reprise the role of Jennifer in the unofficial 1993 sequel, Savage Vengeance, though there's obviously nothing canonical about this appearance, given that she's only credited as Jennifer for legal reasons. After a reboot trilogy came and went between 2010 and 2015, a direct sequel to the 1978 film finally came to pass, I Spit on Your Grave, Deja Vu, as written and directed by the original filmmaker and featuring Keaton herself as Jennifer Hills in a supporting role. As neat as it was seeing Keaton back in the role 41 years after the fact, the outcome for her character was frustrating to say the least, and the movie's 148 minute runtime was also a bit much. And that's our list, what other characters disappeared for far too long? Let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and swing on by our channel again soon. I'm Tilly, and this has been What Culture. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.